Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a, yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. It's Saturday night, and you know what that means. It's time for your AEW Collision Event Center Wrestling Report. Now, here's the man to give you that report, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Episode number 1,149. How's it going, everybody? Today, Jan uh, today's January. And January. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, everybody's going to be like, hey, what's wrong with you, Eric? We're in the middle of the year, and you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking a few, five months back. <laughs> well, I'm very, very sorry. It's been a long, crazy week for me, but I'm glad it's ending. <clears throat> but it's been a good week, but, you know, I'm just fine. As far as brain farts, I think I got too many of them <laughs> passing so much gas. I think my brain must have ate Taco Bell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm farting like, brain farting like crazy, man. <clears throat> Screw, screwing up words, screwing up teams and everything else, man. I'm like a... And <laughs> spelling words wrong, everything, man. It's like the past two weeks, man. I'm like going over, I'm going, oh boy, what the heck is going on? What the heck is wrong with me, man? What? <laughs> I got, I got to stay focused, man, or something, man. I don't know. This stuff. <laughs> <coughs> I, I just, uh, <laughs> it's one of those days where you just, want, you, you just feel like going, uh, okay, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Uh, I feel like butthead. Uh, all right, okay, I ain't big us. Like let's do, let's do this thing or something. <laughs> oh goodness me, goodness me. Well, people want to know, okay, what the heck I'm going to talk about today? Well, talk about tonight. Actually, it is ten sixteen p.m. June the first, two thousand twenty-four, Saturday night. Saturday night. All right, night for fighting. That's right. AEW Collisions is over. It'll say this is the third part, the third and final part of uh, of the fallout from Double or Nothing, and um, then because we'll, we're going to get into the Forbidden Door. That's right, the Forbidden Door. Well, <laughs> that can be many, many things. The Forbidden Door, and uh, never mind. Never mind, Eric. Shut up, Eric. Shut up, Eric. Shut up, Eric. <laughs> you, you already gave yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is cracking me up, man. Just stinkingly cracking me up. What do you think? So, um, let's let's talk about what happened on AEW Collision. Uh, Tony Schiavone, uh, man, and um, TBS announcing wrestling announcing legend. I mean, did you know Tony Schiavone did get a start in the WWE back in the eighties? Yeah, he did. And, and that's how he's worse. And they became an ultimate store war and legend for um, WCW. And then um, and now apparently AEW. I think TBS could stand for Tony B. B. Schiavone. You know, I don't know if B's his middle name or anything like that, but it would be really funny if it was. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, Tony Schiavone interviewed FTR. FTR says they were a bit banged up. They were disappointed that they, that they lost to the Elite in that Anarchy in the Arena matchup, but they said that when they come back, when Brian Danielson comes back, when Darby Allen comes back, they're going to make the Elite's lives a living hell. And you know what? I would not be surprised if they decide to do that, because I think the Elite is really abusing their powers one too many times, and it's going to bite them in the rear end for sure. And there's no doubt in my mind, that's going to happen. That is going to happen. And believe me, the elite, the card-carrying members of the Beavis looking, uh, Beavis Butthead Fan Club, again, do I have to say N Nicholas and um, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, or, or I like to call them N Nicholas and Matthew Jackass. <laughs> and Nicholas Jackass better shave that stupid beard because he does remind me too much of... Austin Aries. <laughs> he should shave that stupid, stupid beard. I don't like that stupid beard. I don't like beards. 
if they're going to be shaved like the way freaking Nicholas Jackson shaves his beard. Anyways. <laughs> so they had a, a great matchup. Uh, Leo Rush versus the former. And I'm sure it doesn't sit well with uh, Roderick. Don't call me Ned Flanders Strong. Uh, <laughs> Roderick Strong. Heck of a matchup between these two. Even the Undisputed Kingdom at ringside were uh, clowning around with Roosh, uh, Leo Rush's jacket. I want to say Roosh. Leo Rush's jacket. And um, that kind of distracted Leo Rush a little bit. But then Roderick Strong took advantage of that situation and ended up winning the match. So Leo Rush could have used his Blackheart character to help him defeat Roderick Strong. But instead, the... Uh, the, Ned, the winner of the Ned Flanders Lookalike Contest? Well, well, did, um, did win the matchup. Kyle O'Reilly addresses Will Ospreay, and he is focused. You can tell in his promo that he's very, very focused on becoming the international champion. And he wants to do it. And everybody seems to take a shine to Will Ospreay, man. I'm telling you, the aerial assassin is... is uh, <clears throat> The aerial assassin is well on his way to become the most popular AEW wrestler ever on the planet. Meanwhile, Lexi Nair tried to get an, uh, tried to get an interview to uh, of Roderick Strong, but then Roderick Strong bypassed her to talk to Tony Khan and Christopher Daniels, and says he wants a title shot, and he says he wants to face Will Ospreay. And Tony Khan thought it'd be a great. You no, know, Tony Khan back in uh, back in the saddle, back in action. That means young bucks, you stupid idiots. You didn't get the job done. So, uh, so Tony Khan made the matchup for this week on this coming uh, this coming Wednesday on Dynamite, the June the fifth, as <clears throat> as as uh, Roderick Strong will challenge Swerve Strickland. For the AEW World Title, the winner will face Will Ospreay at the Forbidden Door. Tag team action in place is Dale Garcia with his cool, cool looking dance thing. I can't get that dance down, but the way he does, you know, it's like he, he's got some serious moves. And I heard he's very popular with the ladies that day. Against the wrestler, Katsuyori Shibata. Really cool dude. Going up against the War Horseman, that would be Anthony Henry, formerly known as Asher Hale, in NXT. And, um, when he was part of NXT, and J.D. Drake. And heck of a matchup could have gone either way, but Garcia and Shibata wins the matchup. And then, and then Stokely Hathaway and Chris Stantlander with, with a new attitude apologized to Will Nightingale. And how did they do it? Well, they presented her with garbage. And I'm telling you, the, uh, Stokely Hathaway, come on. The dude looks like if Charles Barkley and... And Gary Coleman, God rest his soul, had a love child that they don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at Stokely Hathaway. I said, somebody put Charles Barkley and shrunk him in the dryer? <laughs> I know NBA and TNT's out the door, but <laughs> why does Charles Barkley have a job in AEW and he shrunk him in the dryer? <laughs> Stokely Hathaway is so easy to be with one of <laughs> Or it could be Charles Barkley and Kevin Hart had a love child. <laughs> they don't even know about. <laughs> uh, what I had this great sudden urge to look at Stokely Hathaway and serenade him with, Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. It might be right for you. It might be right for some. The man is born. He's a man of means. And along come to. They got nothing to dreams. They got... Different strokes it takes, different strokes it takes, different strokes to rule the world. <laughs> and everybody's got a special kind of story. Everybody finds a way to shine. And no matter that you got, not a lot. It don't work, we don't have yours and your hearts and our mind. And together we'll be fine. It takes different strokes to do the world. If it does, it takes different strokes to rule the world. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking at Stokely Hathaway. <laughs> Oh, man. I think Stokely Hathaway could play Baxter Stockman in the next Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> oh, fuck, guys. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh. Anyways, they were very mean to still to Will Nightingale. Will Nightingale and Chris Tatlander down the road is going to be hilarious. I mean, it's going to be great, I should say. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, Thunder Rosa and Reina Donata making her debut. It looks like Thunder Rosa's got a new submission hold. And it seems like she used it on Reina Dorada. She won the matchup. And she basically says she's not done with Diana Parazzo, the virtuoso yet. So that's going to be a heck of a match. And now with that new submission hold that Thunder Rosa has, <laughs> Diana better watch out. Meanwhile, in trios action, the Cage of Agony, that's Brian Cage, Bishop Khan, and Tola Leona, who's probably more out of control than the, than the bloodline in the WWE right now. Going up against the team of Danny Rose, R uh, Ricky G, and KM. <laughs> and the Gates of Agony just basically molly -whopped. Danny Rose, Ricky G, and KM. Despite KM's size, they basically molly -whopped. The Gates of Agony just basically won the matchup. And Timeless, Tony Storm, the AEW Women's Champion, my girl. Along with... The beautiful Mariah May were addressing Soraya, and, and Tony Storm was upset with Soraya, the way Soraya insulted Mariah May, and they'll be, and Mariah May will go at it against Soraya one on one, the Battle of the Brits, while the, the Aussie Angels, my favorite Aussie Angels, Tony Storm and Harley Cameron, will probably be in the corner, corners of these two ladies. Meanwhile, Claudio Castagnoli went one-on-one -on -one with Johnny TV, formerly known as Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, uh, Johnny Spade, whatever, accompanied by his wife, Taya Valkyrie. That's right. The one Jesse says he is married. Now, for those of you who have not watched wrestling quite a while, yeah, Johnny TV once dated Melina. That was back in the day, but now he's married to Taya Valkyrie. And, and every time I think of Melina, the interview, Rant and Rave 200, it was an ultimate honor to interview Melina, talk to her, and wow, and she's so sweet. I still, I still, I'm never gonna live that down, because um, it was just an awesome interview, man. Lo I love Melina. Anyways, um, Claudio Castagnoli won the match after a uh, little Cesar, a little bit of a swing, a little bit of a swing, and beat in beat him. So, Premier Athletes promo by Smart, Smart, Smart Sterling as Josh Woods, Tony Nese, and Aria Davari will be making their arrival soon on the AEW card, possibly Collision. We shall see what this trio can do. The um, it looks like the trio's uh, division is going to be very interesting, to say at least. Uh, speaking of which, the trio of Shane Taylor Promotions, Shane Taylor, the leader of the pack, and Tiger Style Lee Moriarty to take on the West Coast Wrecking Crew of... Uh, I want to say Jarrell Clark. I think it was Jarrell Harris, I think it was. And Royce Isaac. Isaacs. Um, and uh, Shane Taylor Promotions won the matchup. It's Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and Anthony Ogogo. Power Rangers. No, I'm okay. um, the Iron Savages cut a promo about being part of the trio's division, but they got their butts kicked and handed to them by the Patriarchy's monster, Killswitch. Hmm. Is the Patriarchy thinking about getting the trio's titles as well? Hmm. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe that was Marching Orders by Christian Cage. And, and the main event was one of the best matches ever. Will Ospreay and Kyle O'Reilly going one-on-one -on -one for the international title. And meanwhile, uh, Dan, Dan, um, Daniel Garcia, who has stressed that he wants a shot at the uh, international title. Him and Matt Menard are watching the matchup. And um, Will Ospreay, despite the fact he hurt his, um, his left arm got hurt during the matchup, Won the match, and both competitors did shake hands and showed respect to each other. And it looks like Kyle O'Reilly, the loss is going to eat away at him for a bit, for a bit, but it'll only be a matter of time where Kyle O'Reilly is going to get back on his feet. Meanwhile, Swerve Strickland addresses Will Ospreay and Roderick Strong. Looks like uh, Str uh, Strickland was not very happy that how Roderick Strong got his title shot, but he'll probably teach him a lesson the same, you know. And you know what? It doesn't bother me. I love the idea. Um, boy. So, that's all the time we have on the show. Episode number, um, 
1,449 of Eric Lehman's shenanigans of 1977. Sorry for that, singing different strokes, you know. And now the song was in my head, and I, and I look at Stokely Hathaway, and, and the Love Child, uh, Love Child, oh, no, Love Child Fire Marshal Bill and the Whammy Professional, that's in the Miz. I'm not going to make fun of him until he turns heel again. I always like making fun of the heels because they're they're funny they're they're, um, they're funny they're entertaining and they're easy to pick on, and um, and I look at uh, like I said I look at Stokely Hathaway, either uh, Charles Barkley had had his DNA mixed up with uh, the late great Carrie Coleman's or the fact that he somebody shoved him in the dryer and shrank him so <laughs> that's all I can think of and then when I think of Gary Coleman I'm thinking of different strokes you know, God rest Gary Coleman's soul but uh, still. You know, I look at you know I look at Stokely Hathaway. <laughs> Don't remind me too much, too much of him. So uh, that's all the time we have on the show. Episode again, episode one thousand four hundred forty nine, uh, AEW Collision Event Center for June the first, two thousand twenty four. Tomorrow, who knows what's going to happen? I usually don't do videos tomorrow on Sundays. It's usually Monday through Saturday, but I'll think I'll figure something. I'll figure out something um, as usual. So. That's all the time I have on the show. So I will see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed night. Good night, everybody. And until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, Dorf of Bob Saget Productions, and in association with I'll leave them both for telepictures and distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.